5.0 Oreo. Anything I missed will be linked down below in the description, and I'm very sorry I do not know when Android Oreo will be available on your device. So let's go ahead and talk about the visual changes, starting off with the notification dots. Basically, these let you know when you have a notification waiting to be read from that application, which of course can be easily read by long pressing on the app itself. Notification dots will also be color coded based off the application colors, which I think is a nice touch, and something else that's color coded is media controls in the notification shade. So for example, when I play something on Spotify, the notification will display painted in a color based off the album cover of whatever I'm listening to. I actually really like this. In 8.0 Oreo, we do have the new emoji facelift. Some people like these and some people don't. I'm sort of in the middle with these. Yeah, I do kind of miss the blobs and I know a lot of you guys out there do as well. These are quite cartoonish, but I guess they could be worse, right? I don't know. What do you guys think? You can't forget the new Easter egg and I'm not too sure how I feel about this seeing as how it's an octopus and there seems to be no trace of anything that has to do with an Oreo. It's pretty interesting. Jumping back to the home screen, when you long press on an application, you'll find additional app shortcuts, including app specific widgets and application info. Taking a quick look in the app drawer, you'll see that the navigation buttons turn gray and the navbar itself is also brighter. And when you use the side scroller, you'll see some of the app icons pop as you scroll. It's a minimal change, but it's there. Another minimal change is the ability to swipe up from anywhere on the home screen to get to the app drawer, not just from the dock. This is very nice to see. In the notification shade and quick settings menu, you'll see the new black, white, and light gray colorway. The date along with the setting shortcut, user profile, menu editor, and menu expander are now positioned underneath the settings toggles. And the time has been shifted over to the right, now accompanied by the battery percentage. Of course, you also have that neat effect when you scroll through multiple notifications with the app icons scrolling along with you. I like that. And jumping into the settings menu itself, you'll see a lot more gray and a lot less blue as far as setting icons go. And thank goodness the whole place has been cleaned up and organized. Everything is better categorized with submenus to make it easier to find what exactly you're looking for and to keep the setting list much more compact. They also got rid of that support tab and that slide out menu from the left. Now we do get a handful of functional features like the ability to snooze notifications. This can be super useful if you'd like a notification to pop back into the notification shade a little later. There's notification channels, which lets you customize the different categories of notifications you can get from that app. So for example, from the Play Store, I can turn off notifications for account alerts, but I can turn on notifications for when new app updates are available. You've got the ever so popular picture in picture mode, which lets you keep a YouTube video playing in a small window so you can watch while still using your phone. And if you're just looking to listen to music on YouTube, you can hit that headphone icon to just play the audio in the background. And picture in picture mode will also work with Google Maps, Duo, Play Movies, and Chrome. But you will need a YouTube Red subscription to do it with YouTube. Yeah, I know. There are new storage features with the free up space function, which allows you to batch delete multiple unused things like files, pictures, and even applications. Then you have smart storage, which deals with Google Photos, and you also get shortcuts to categorized app management, as well as a shortcut to what is pretty much an all-out file manager. With Android Oreo, you can now double tap this screen when it's off to toggle the refreshed, more minimalistic ambient display, where it'll show the time, as well as app icons for the notifications you have. And from here, double tapping again will wake the display to your lock screen. You've got smart text selection, which will recognize things like phone numbers, addresses, and different locations. And when you highlight that text, it'll give you an option to act on what you've highlighted. So for phone numbers, you can jump straight to the phone app. And for addresses and locations, you can jump straight to Google Maps. In the settings under the security options, you will see the Find My Device function, and you'll also see that Google Play Protect is now part of the settings. Play Protect, of course, was launched a little while ago, but what this looks to do is scan the applications that you install for harmful behavior to keep your device as safe as possible. Then there's the autofill feature, which automatically fills in usernames and passwords for applications of your choosing. It uses the info that you've synced through your Google account, so all of the passwords that you've saved on Chrome will now work with autofill on Android. Oreo. Now in developer options, you'll find that there's a small handful of new Bluetooth codecs, including aptX, aptX HD, LDAC, and AAC. So while there aren't many UI changes and there aren't any groundbreaking features, a lot of the changes in Android Oreo actually come from underneath the hood, so to speak. And the main goal here is to give users a more enjoyable user experience, as well as give developers a bunch of cool things that they can do with their apps. There are loads of changes under the hood and it would take me forever to go through them all. But notably, you've got something called Vitals, which includes Play Protect. It's got OS optimizations and developer tools. OS optimizations include the pixel booting up much much, much faster than before. There's faster and smoother app performance, greatly improved background service management, which should definitely help with battery life, thank goodness. And one of the neat tools devs will be given is Play Console, which allows devs to see live stats of their applications running on pretty much any Android device, which I'm sure is a huge help to them for tweaking their applications for better performance and battery usage. Developers were given a slew of new abilities, and if you'd like to run through all of the things that'll translate into future applications, again, check out the description. So overall, I think Android 8.0 Oreo is a great update. While there aren't many visual changes or super cool features, the update does bring a lot of refinements and enhancements that aim to make the whole Android experience much better. So what do you guys think of Android 8.0 Oreo? Let us know your thoughts by dropping them down below in the comment section. As always, we'd love to hear your feedback. But anyway, that does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. Subscribe to the Android Police channel if you haven't already. That does it for me. I'll talk to you guys later, and thanks for watching.